Hi, I made 2D, cartoony and dynamic fire that looks absolutely great for my game Down Down Die. So wanna know how I made it? And do you want to know about this little dragon? Then hang with me because I'll show you. By the way, if you want to follow me or my projects, then please subscribe to my channel. It will make me very happy. Thanks. Now let's firstly talk about the dragon, since it's an enemy and enemies are always cool and exciting. Actually, the idea of making cool fire came with the creation of this enemy, so thank him. As usual, I hopped on Procreate on my iPad and started drawing the dragon. In the end, I came up with three animations, him casually flying, him shooting one fireball and him shooting many small fireballs. Back in Unity, I of course polished the animations a bit with motion and squish and squash until I was satisfied. Maybe if you watched my older videos about Down Down Die, you can remember the bat and the ghost enemy. Good thing is that I actually created different movement components for different enemies, so scripts for patrolling, walking, jumping and flying. So I just reused what I already had. And after a few minutes, everything related to movement has been finished. Then it was just about creating the attacks and polishing. I made two attacks. The first one was for the shooting one fireball animation. Here I used this big semicircle firewall that uses the shader that I'll show you later, that moves very slowly and releases a big fire when it hits the ground. It is a very big projectile with lots of damage and fire effect. The second attack that I made was this fire spying attack, where he shoots many smaller fireballs in your direction. They deal less damage, but in some they release a big amount of fire, which covers the whole ground. And after I was done with the attacks, I moved on to polishing. I made a nice but very brutal death effect for him, and I decided to make him immune to fire effects. So let me show you how a usual fight with the little dragon looks like. I mean, it's probably still way too strong, but I think after some further balancing, it will be a lot of fun to fight. Please tell me what you think about the little dragon. My best friend said it looks way too cute to kill. And the death effect might be too brutal for my game. Please tell me your opinion. I mean, I like it. Okay, now fire. If you want to achieve this effect with the sharp cartoony edges, you might want to use a combination of an alpha map, pollen noise and a step note. Don't know what that is? Don't worry, I'll explain. Let's start with the alpha map. What I mean by that is basically a texture only there for giving us a rough shape of the fire with these blurred edges. The step note is there to check whether the value of one particular pixel on the gradient noise, the thing that looks like smooth terrain, falls below the value of the alpha map. If that's true, it will output 1, and if not, it will output 0. So the blurred picture would turn into this with sharp edges. Of course, we don't only want to have one heat zone in the fire, or at least me, so we will set up two extra parameters, two floats that decrease the alpha map by some factor below 1. So we basically make the alpha map more translucent. This will result into more pixels being under the value of the gradient noise, so the flame is smaller and more fractured. With these two different factors and the base, we now have all what we need for the three heat zones. Obviously, you can make a sheer infinite amount of heat zones if you please, but three are enough for me. Now we just come up with three colors for the heat zones to multiply with, and then the last step is to add the heat zones with each other. Great. And if you scale the gradient noise according to the scale of the object, it won't look good when you scale the flame. So you can make little candle flames or big campfire flames without adjusting the scale of the gradient noise manually. Now it's just about playing around with the factors, changing the colors and applying bloom. And some flickering lights, sparks and the smoke particle system later, we have a beautiful flame. Okay, let's make it dynamic. Well, kind of. The only thing a flame should do is extinguishing and spreading. But I don't want to make a computational expensive simulation, so let's cheat our array around that. Extinguishing is pretty easy. It's just about creating a variable that stores the strength of the flame and adjusting the scale according to it. And we can also vary the fire damage it deals to the player with the strength. And after it falls below a certain threshold, we can stop the smoking, cause it would look weird. 
Now, spreading is a bit more complex, so I made it a bit easier to understand. When a flame spawns, it goes down on the ground, and after a small delay, it should create offsprings, which is why it checks in both directions if there is another flame or a wall. If not, then it places an offspring. Of course, this offspring should not have the same strength like the parent flame, since it developed only from the energy of the parent flame. So, we also decrease the parent's strength and only allow around 70% of its energy to pass on its offspring. The offspring will also check its surroundings and place flames based on it. Now, only in one direction, because the direction it came from is blocked by its parent. And over multiple iterations, we have this nice looking fire consisting out of smaller flames. Also, we can see the tip of the fire and the decreasements over the generations. Okay, thank you very much for listening to me. And maybe, if you subscribe, we will see us in the future again. Bye bye!